Rub up your engines! Okay, we got a 2002 Honda Accord. The lady bought it seven years ago with like 90,000 miles. She's put about 100,000 on it. She paid four grand. You know what she's done? She's changed the oil. That is it. Didn't touch the brakes. Didn't touch the spark plugs. Didn't put a timing belt on it. Didn't do anything except change the oil filter and it still runs. Because in 2002, Honda made one of the best cars in the world. When you look under the hood, you got a four-cylinder VTEC engine, lots of power. Yes, it does have a rubber timing belt. This one was done before. When her sister owned it, they had it done. If you don't want to be stranded somewhere, change it every 100,000 miles. Got the original alternator, air conditioning compressor. It blows cold. Now, yes, it's a Honda automatic transmission. And it is a little bit glitchy. When it's cold, she puts it in reverse. Takes a few seconds, then it goes. And she puts it in drive, same thing. And now when you're driving, if you really push it, it has rough ships. It was that way seven years ago. She's from a small town in Mississippi, 500 people. Had an honest mechanic. He told her, well, you can spend 1600 bucks with me and I can fix it, rebuild it, but why not drive it? Well, seven years later, she's still driving. It's still got the little glitch, but it's still working. He was an honest guy, because in Houston, that would have been at least 3500 bucks. So I guess there's an advantage of living in small towns in Mississippi. If you can find a good mechanic, they're not going to charge you as much. Plus, they're going to be honest about the whole thing. You're not going to find that in too many big cities. Even the Honda rims are still good. And yeah, it's an old car, so it's only got drums in the back, but it stops perfectly fine. It's got discs in the front. She's never touched them, and they still got all kinds of pad left on them because she's a conservative driver. Like I say, the AC works. It still has the original Honda radiator. Plastic it may be, but it's well-made plastic. And check out the interior. It's not ripped or torn at all. Start it up. And yes, it has a CD player. It still works, and so does the tape deck. This is old school. The driver's side has power window that works, although the passenger side's broken. She didn't want to spend money on a new motor, so she just rolls this one down and put tape on the other one. <laughs> Into reverse. You can feel a little clunk. It is worn, nothing outrageous. Listen to how quiet the engine is. If you remember that video I made last year in Rhode Island of the Fiat that had 4,000 miles, it was 10 times louder than this thing with almost 200,000. She lied though because she did put a battery in it. Well, you can't blame that on Honda. Batteries just flat wear out over time, right? Now I hook my scan tool up to it. You've seen that a million times. No trouble codes on any sort. But here's the interesting thing. The short term and the long term fuel trim were 0 0.95, 0 0.95. That means that it's running at 99.05% efficiency, almost 100%. And that's almost unbelievable considering the mileage on this car. Now granted, she told me the truth. She does mainly highway driving, which doesn't wear your car out as much, but an old car like this, idling this smooth, running at 99.15% efficiency. The sunroof still even works. Kind of amazing when you think about it. Even more amazing, it wasn't made in Japan. This one was made Honda North America in Ohio. The cooling fans still work. And amazingly enough, it gets 30 miles a gallon. The video I made a while back on a brand new Toyota Corolla. It got 33 miles a gallon driving it over here. All those years difference doesn't make that much difference in highway gas mileage. Heck, that 85 camera I had over here, it got 30 miles a gallon on the highway. But then again, it's a lot more fun driving this than it was that old Camry that really couldn't get out of its way. So I'll take it for a little road test. The complaint the owner has is she wished it was a little bit higher. So she wasn't looking up so high at the big 18 wheels as she drives down the highway. But you can't have everything. Check it out. The power steering still works. The engine doesn't check much. Did you felt that little jiggle. It does shift a little bit funky. See, you can feel that little clunk clunk. That's the transmission being worn. But then again, she said it was worn like that seven years ago. She is babying it. I told her, if you baby it, you can let it go. Now, hey, if that guy's gonna fix it for 1600 bucks in Mississippi and it does go, what the heck, she can get it fixed. But she's been driving it seven years this way and babying it. Because of course, once you're on the highway in top gear, it doesn't shift at all. This is not a car you're gonna buy for a kid who's gonna be drag racing. He would burn the transmission out in half an hour probably. But if you baby it, she's seven years going on and she's still driving it down the road, getting 30 miles a gallon on the highway. And still got decent handling even though it's still got the original struts on all four corners. Still pretty quiet, not creaking or making all kinds of noises. 20 year old car, it's pretty quiet. See, you can feel a little shift, mister. You baby it when you take off. 
you do not drag race in an old Honda like this unless you're willing to do another transmission. And she's gone 100,000 miles with it doing this, so what the heck? Why not try to get another 100? Who knows? Maybe it will. Whatever you do, do not flush one of these transmissions out. You flush it out, it'll probably start slipping like mad. Then you gotta get it one rebuilt. In most places, you're gonna spend at least 3,500 bucks to get it done correctly. They're very expensive transmissions. The brakes? They work perfectly fine, no pulling, no noise, no creaking. Because truthfully, disc brakes, you don't need them on a car like this in the back. The backs are drums on this, as I showed, but the fronts are discs. And even at that rate, she hasn't changed them in 100,000 miles, and they're still really thick, because she's a conservative driver who does a lot of highway driving. And the digital clock still works. This one's so old, it's not affected by those crazy time changes and computer flaws. It's just a digital clock with three buttons to set. Listen to it. It is such a quiet idle for a car. It's almost got 200,000 miles on it, and everything works. Except for that window. Well, you can't have everything. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Right says, my car rattles only after I change the spark plugs. Car at 87,000 miles. Now it's rattling. It's 12 years old. You change the spark plugs. I'm assuming you got the right spark plugs and you gap them right. They got the right gap and you tighten them up. The coil on plug that fire them, right? They're made out of plastic and they have rubber boots. They've been sitting there for 12 years since the set it only has 87,000 miles. That was probably the first time they've ever been moved since the vehicle was made 12 years ago. Odds are some of those have gone bad. Since it's that old, I'd just say replace all the coil on plugs. You're probably fine. It'll go away. You moving them, the plastic got cracked when you twisted them and took them off and put them on. That's typical. Now, if you don't want to buy them all, get a scan tool or pay a mechanic to analyze. And you might say that, okay, number six and number two are misfiring. Then you could just change the number six and number two coil pack and see what happens. But I mean, that old, I'd just buy them all and change them all. And you would have to think about it. Odds are that's what it is because that's all you did. As long as you didn't knock any wires off or something while you're doing the work to get to the spark plugs. The main thing is you twist on the coil plug assembly out. It is plastic and rubber and probably cracked and now electricity short now. Janeski says, I'm thinking about buying a Scion TC and I'm worried because I don't want to get an oil burner. What do you think? I would not buy one. 2007 and 2010. I would not because almost all the Scion that I've seen all ended up burning oil. And why buy a car that's burning oil? You could look at one, take out the spark plugs if there's no burnt oil on them and the guy didn't just change them yesterday to hide it from you and they're all brand new and shiny, then it's not burning. But almost all of them end up burning oil as they get high mileage on it. If you already own one, oil's cheap. What the heck? Spark plugs are cheap. They're easy to change on a four-cylinder engine. But why buy a car that's burning oil if you don't have to? I would stay away from those particular years. They're just Toyotas. You know, they don't make science anymore, but it's Toyota. The cars were good other than those years. Burn oil because they put bad piston rings on them. Wrangler Race says, I got a 92 Chevy Caprice base model, 324,000 miles. Light gray smoke from the tailpipe. Mechanic says it's not a blown head gasket or cracked block, but can't explain the smoke. What do you think is doing it. Your mechanic is an idiot because you can test. A real mechanic can test any of that stuff. What we do is we'll do a wet and dry compression test of the engine. The wet, when you add a little oil to each cylinder, goes up a lot higher. That means the piston rings are worn. The piston rings are worn, then you're going to get smoke coming out of the engine. If the difference isn't that much dry and wet, that would mean that the valve seals are shot and it's sucking oil from the top end because the valve seals don't seal. And when your intake open, they suck in the fuel, but they also suck in a little bit of oil because the oil seal's gone. You got a 124,000 miles on that engine. It's a 92. I mean, as long as it runs okay, if I you, I just keep driving a stupid thing. If you're really in love with the vehicle and you want to do it right, with that kind of mileage, you forget it. I would just buy a remanufactured engine and put in it when it didn't run right. But if it's running right now, I wouldn't even worry about it. But if you do want to know what it is, do the wet and dry compression test. I've got videos on it. You can watch it or pay a mechanic to do it. Go to another mechanic, one that understands better than your mechanic does, and he can give you all the choices. Dom Lopez says, I got a 2015 Hyundai Sonata and my traction control light stays on and the car will not accelerate. Sometimes check engine light will come on too. Then when I shut it off, the car will work just fine. What could be the issue? Well, you could have either a bad sensor or a bad main computer. You say sometimes the check engine light comes on. What you want to do is get a mechanic like myself that has a high level scan tool to scan it and look at the historical codes. Our machines store all the historical codes and then see what's going on. Odds are you got some code that's doing that because on those designs, when you have a check engine light and there's a problem, often that will turn your traction control system off because if there's a problem with the car, it's not safe to have traction control because that can do things like change your timing and power and it's too complicated 
lubricate it, could screw everything up, so it just shuts that system up. Find out why the check engine light is on, and when you do and fix it, you'll probably find a traction control light won't come on. Now, if it is also a traction control system problem, then when a good mechanic like me scan it, we get into the traction control data, and it'll show codes for them. Those codes don't necessarily show up on a cheap scan tool you're going to get for 50 bucks, only on the really expensive ones. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.